<laughs> hey guys, Mrs. Yagel here again, and I'm ready to finish the end of chapter nine for you. So we're starting on page 82, kind of right in the middle. Here we go. Addison drew deep breaths despite his aching ribs. He tried to remain calm. First of all, there is no need to shout in my ear. Eddie already has that department covered. And second, he continued, I see the police. Well, said Molly, if we don't want the police after us, maybe we shouldn't destroy the Kowloon market. Look, it's not our fault someone put a market right here, said Addison, ramming a display of exotic birds, toppling their cages, and releasing several dozen cockatoos back into the wild. Besides, Madame Feng already said the police were on her side. Addison, we need to stop messing around and get out of here if we're going to help Aunt Delia and Uncle Nigel. I'm working on it. He steered left to avoid a police barricade and right to avoid an advancing triad. Up ahead, the market crowd grew too dense and he could drive no farther. Addison careened to a stop with the help of a row of mopeds, three pedestrians, two shopping carts, and an iron dumpster. Molly tumbled off the back of the bike, landing hard on her side. Addison leapt off the bike. Are you okay, Molly? She grimaced, clutching her elbow. I skinned my arm. Hop back on, we can still lose them. A triad motorcycle skidded to a halt, closing off Addison's escape path. The triad flipped down the kickstand, dismounted, and swept off his helmet. Addison sized up his opponent. The triad clutched twin trench knives, his fingers laced through the brass knuckles on each handle, allowing him to punch or cut. He was handsome, with spiked hair, a leather jacket, dark sunglasses, and a hint of a smile. Style went a long way with Addison, and he decided he rather liked the fellow. Granted, the man was about to attack him, but first impressions aren't everything. Listen, Addison began, backing up with his hands raised. You seem like a reasonable man. I doubt that, Raj interrupted. He's a green diamond triad. A what now? Addison leapt back to dodge a wild slash from the triad's knife. The most dangerous of the triad gangs. You can tell by his neck tattoo. A triangle of green swords. Molly struggled to her feet. Raj... How do you know this stuff? In chapter seven of Mission Survival by Babutunde Okajo, he enumerates, guys, Eddie pleaded, can we please focus on the matter at hand? Addison's group backed up slowly. They were cornered between a brick wall and a fishmonger's stall. The triad took another mighty sweep with his knife. Addison had nowhere left to retreat. He saw his moment and lunged to grab the gang member's blade. The triad was too fast. Addison missed, collided with the triad's shoulder, and went down in a, jumble, in a jumbled heap. Raj seized an ice bucket from the fishmonger and walloped it at the gang member's head with all his strength. The man ducked. Raj missed entirely, scattering ice everywhere. Molly, wincing from the pain in her arm, grabbed a heavy bottle of fish sauce from the fishmonger's stand. She swung it hard at the triad's jaw, looking for a grand slam. The ganger step, gangster stepped lightly backward, dodging the blow only to slip on the ice, crack his head on the pavement, and knock himself out cold. Teamwork, said Addison. He was fast, Molly said, deeply impressed. Who is that guy? Tony Chin, said Addison. How do you know? I took his wallet. Addison winked at Molly and held up Tony Chin's driver's license. Little trick I learned in Bogota. More triads rushed closer, but it was a Hong Kong police officer who arrived first. Red-faced with anger, he charged Addison, brandishing his billy club high. Winding up for the strike, he slid on the ice, went down sideways, and clobbered the street with his head. He lay there dazed. Wow, said Addison, feeling invincible. We need to go away from this ice, said Eddie. A fresh tide of gang members flooded the market. Molly, can you still run, asked Addison. It's my arm that's hurt, not my leg. Addison's group feathered their way past the fishmonger's stall and fled. Legging it through the Kowloon Street, Addison made a quick inventory of Tony Chin's cash and, more importantly, the credit card situation. American Express, he said. I love the mileage points. Addison pocketed the wallet. At last, the alley opened up, revealing the pier and harbor beyond. Addison spotted the ferry leaving the dock, sounding its deep horn across the bay. The group ran, wheezing for breath. A few triads, marathon runners perhaps, still loped after them. We missed the boat, cried Eddie. This way, called Addison, leaping down from the pier and onto the rickety Chinese junk. Three fishermen stared at the group in confusion until Addison whipped up Tony Chin's wallet and held up a fistful of yuan. The fishermen saw the running triads and grasped the situation. Then they grasped the yuan. 
They swung into action, unmooring and shoving away from the dock. Raj lent a hand at the oars. A single triad drew his gun, contemplating a shot that might spring a leak in the ancient ship. Crowds of travelers lining the pier made for too many witnesses. The triad slowly lowered his weapon. Addison stood tall at the stern of the ship, the wind tossing his hair. He waved at the triads receding into the distance.